This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome back to the channel. So, as you may have noticed, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch lately. I've been testing out Ash on the PTR, and while doing that, I've actually bumped into a few people who watch this channel, which is really cool. So apparently some of you guys are returning or trying out Overwatch too. The game has such a low barrier to entry, so there's never really a bad time to get into it. It's, it's not like Battle Rate, where if you were just starting out in Arena now, you'd have a really hard time. So yeah, if you've ever thought about playing Overwatch, now's not a bad time to start or return. Anyway, there's something I wanted to talk about today that I've been making a lot of use of lately, and that's flexing between roles. So in some games, you pick your hero or champion or whatever at the start of the game and you're totally locked in until the next game. In Overwatch, you pick a hero at the start, but you're in no way locked into that hero. Most people realize that, but you're also not locked into a role. There is the argument for having a role queue in Overwatch where you would be locked into a role, but that's a different story. The current design of the game is built around people switching heroes. But there's this kind of gentleman's agreement that when you pick a hero, that's your role for the entire game. If you pick Winston at the start, you can swap to Reinhardt or Orisa, and people might not make a comment. But switch to D.Va, Roadhog, or God forbid, something like Farah or Brigitte, and there's this perception that you must be throwing. Now, granted, there are people who will play main tank and say something like, DPS are useless, and then switch. Yeah, that is throw. If for no other reason than lowering team morale, not only are you removing the main tank, but you're also telling everyone that they're bad in the process. That's a big no-no. So don't misconstrue what I'm going to say in this video. I am not condoning throwing a hissy fit and switching roles because you think your team is doing their job. That's incredibly childish and usually counterproductive. However, there are situations where switching roles is totally acceptable. I've been on teams with Reinhardt who clearly don't know what they're doing. They just pick Rein because they think we need one. I can see it and others on the team might see it too. Inexperienced Reins don't know how to push forward and gain ground. They let a lot of enemy shatters through and they basically never swing their hammers. Or maybe they never use their shield. E either way, they don't know the balance between the two. And all of those things are totally understandable if you're really inexperienced. So out of desperation, the Reinhardt might switch to DPS halfway through a game. When this happens, while some of the team might get mad, I usually breathe a sigh of relief. A bad Rhine is a waste of a teammate. If they're just a shield monkey, they're honestly useless, barring cases where there's a DPS behind them absolutely popping off. But most of the time, a bad Rhine just means no pressure on the enemy team. And in those cases, I would much prefer no main tank than a bad one. If they're a solid Hanzo, at least that will mean some extra picks. And bonus, it means I can switch to main tank if needs be. The thing is, it's actually kind of hard to know when you should flex between roles. It's something that does require a good knowledge of the game and it also requires you to be good at multiple roles. So if you're only a DPS player, just stick to DPS. If you only play Mercy, please don't go Ryan because quote unquote, we need one. Like I said, a bad Ryan is worse than no Ryan. I honestly believe that. However, if you can't play main tank, I would highly recommend learning it because it really is the most misunderstood and misplayed role. If you've got a solid Ryan and Winston under your belt, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. You'll win a lot more games if you can flex onto main tank and the same applies to other roles too, of course. So let's talk about how I flex roles. I am, without a doubt, a Faramain. I have more than twice the hours on her compared to any other hero, but I am far from a one trick. I'm a decent soldier player, although he's kind of out of the meta right now. I'm good with a lot of the utility DPS, like Torb, May, and I'm working on Sombra. I also play Junkrat because I like explosions, I guess. But I would say, despite having fewer hours in them, my tank and support game is pretty strong too. I got to High Masters playing Mercy once. Granted, it was in that season when Mercy was disgustingly overpowered, but I also did the same with D.Va, and that was actually not in one of those seasons where she was stupidly OP. Another hero I've learned, and actually out of necessity, is Winston. Winston is a really good counter to most hit scan. And what do people play when I'm doing work as Farah? They go triple hit scan or something. So when that happens, I just switch to Winston. Have you guessed what my game plan is? I'm honestly not the best player mechanically, but I know how Overwatch players think. When someone on the enemy team is causing trouble, people are, relatively speaking, very slow to switch. So many people, if they are even halfway to an ultimate, will just keep playing something that doesn't work until they have their ult. I see that a lot with Reaper players into my Farah. 
They'll stay on Reaper until they death blossom and then they switch. But I'm usually ready for that, so I'll quickly switch as well if I can. And when people do switch, they often overcompensate. They'll go from no answer to Farah to four answers to Farah. And honestly, Winston is the counter to pretty much all of that. So I mess with them as Winston for a bit. Again, they're slow to change. They eventually switch back to Reaper and oh yeah, back to Farah and the cycle repeats. Of course, the reverse is true too. It's important to quickly identify what's going wrong when something isn't working. Don't be one of those I'm gold damage guys. If your team is struggling to push because you don't have a main tank, it doesn't matter that you're gold damage. If you can play main tank, play it. I'm all for trying with no main tank at the start, but the second your team loses momentum, switch. For example, the game I'm showing on screen now, I started out as Farah because, well, when I'm unsure, I just stick to what I'm best at. I didn't really play that well, but I did still get gold damage. But hey, guess what? That means nothing. I quickly identified that we needed a tank, so I went Winston, my best tank. The enemy team actually played really bunched up, so it was actually kind of hard to do my regular monkey stuff. It got to our last push of the round and I knew their Reinhardt had Shatter. So I made a quick switch to Reinhardt myself to try and block it and it was definitely the right decision. We actually ended up doing a reverse sweep of the point and ultimately we won the whole game. So my point here is being able to identify when your team is having trouble can translate into a whole playstyle. You might see that the enemy has a weakness and pick something that exploits that. You might be having trouble with something they're playing and pick a counter to force them to switch it up or your team might be lacking something. So so you change to something that will help. There have been times where my team has had two supports but either their focus is off and they're not keeping priority targets alive or they're constantly dead and I'll actually go from DPS to third support if it seems like it would help. Luckily no one really minds that right now because three supports is part of the meta or if they do have an issue with it one of the supports can switch to DPS. Either way problem solved. In all honesty 90% of the time I pick a role and stick to it. But in those 10% of games where you do have issues swallow that ego, switch early and often if you need to and keep the enemy on their toes. As I've said before in a battle right video play to win don't play not to lose and most importantly have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.